In this video, I'll take you through a few things I found out and a few things I've researched on how to buy a smartphone and five things you should know before you spend your hard-earned money on buying a used smartphone today. This video is brought to you by Business Day and without further ado, let's get to the video. Have you ever come across something like, bros, UK used iPhone 6S is 100K, brand new now 180K. Apparently, UK used iPhones are still so good here in Nigeria and UK smartphones are basically synonymous to already used smartphones. This video is simply going to be me giving you a few tips and a few things that I found out myself you know, buying flagship phones for a cheaper price. Flagship phones are already becoming more and more expensive and quoting Mr. Who's the Boss, there's already a psychological price ceiling of $1,000, which roughly translates to 360,000 Naira. And spending that much on a smartphone when you can get a new version in a few months seems like a reach for a lot of people. So um, people buy used flagship smartphones at a much, much lower price, getting the same value for less. To start with, I ran a mini poll on Twitter with just over 600 people, and this was the answer. Nearly half of the people who voted, or over 40% of people who voted, say that they found some sort of value in buying a smartphone. So yes, they liked it, and only 17% hated it. In my lifetime of smartphone usage, I've only used over 50 smartphones, and out of all of them, I bought two as used. And by the way, this picture is a real picture I, that I took. And I also shared some interesting stuff on my Twitter, which I think you should check out. My handle is at Fosudo. And I, I share a lot of things on there. The first fairly used smartphone I got was over the counter, and it was my first one ever. I only tested to see if it came, if the phone came on, and or if it was crashed, or if it was broken, or if the battery was intact. But the second one was a more recent one that I got off of Gigi, which is a website people like you and me can buy and pre-sell and sell pre-owned things. And I'm going to be talking about it in a bit. The first part is for online. Now, the first thing I'd like to talk about is the platform where you want to, you know, where you seek to buy this secondhand smartphone. Usually, the best place to buy a refurbished smartphone is from the company directly. Apple has a certified refurbished program that comes with a one-year warranty. You get to see the different products and you can even save up to $350 on some of them. Also, if you go on Amazon, it's easy to find a certified refurbished or renewed smartphone for sale. Amazon is very reputable and they use a rating system to let you know a lot more about the devices you want to buy and from people's experiences with the seller. The better the rating, the easier it is to trust them and you can ship them down to Nigeria. In Nigeria here, locally, there are sites like Gigi and formerly OLX, where people like you and me can put up ads, you know, for what we want to buy or sell ourselves. Um, on sites like these, um, the things to look out for are the ratings, like I mentioned. And if you see any sort of warranty, that's always very good. It's usually like a short-term warranty you get, but you know, it's kind of fine. Also, you must make sure that there's some sort of return policy and make sure you read the description thoroughly to know the exact product you're buying. If there's a way you can contact the seller, please do. They show the seller's phone number on the site like GG and they have a live chat platform where you can chat directly with the seller. The second thing we need to know is what to ask the seller. Now, when I made a purchase of the smartphone I did online, um, I had to ask a few things. First off, I had to ask for the condition of the device. I asked the seller to send me images and you know, maybe he could send me a video. So the seller actually sent me a video. You want to know the age of the device, how long this device has been released on your own and how long this device has been in the hand of the user. Usually for most fairly used smartphones or flagship smartphones, it's between one to two years. The price would already have been displayed on the website. So um, that's something you don't need to ask. And if you can, you might still be able to negotiate for the price or know if there's any extra tax or charge that might accrue. Now, the second part of this video is the offline part. Now, the next thing I'd like you to know about when you're buying a fairly used smartphone is the pre-owned condition. In other words, you want to find out if the smartphone was stolen or if it was repaired. This would work when you're considering buying offline or when the seller you contacted online brings the device to you. A demonstration. First of all, this is my iPhone XS Max and more often than not, people tend to buy iPhones fairly used at a higher end price. People also tend to buy higher end Android devices like the Pixel and the Samsung S series devices. This tool called the imei.info, which I'll leave a link to in the description below, will show me everything I need to know about this iPhone. That's based on its IMEI info. Here we go. So firstly, on my iPhone or any iPhone or even any phone, um, you can dial star hash 06 hash and you get a pop-up showing your IMEI number. Now, if this doesn't work, Run. Um, then you just have to go on to imei.info and impute the IMEI number you just saw. And then you see all the details you need to know whether the iPhone is an actual iPhone as they claim and not something else, maybe like Amala or something. Android devices are much harder to know exactly because they're easy, they easy to wipe 
However, getting into the settings, you can check for like the existing accounts that, that were on the phone. And this helps you know if it is pre-owned, if it isn't wiped correctly. Now at number four is the physical condition. This is the first step in knowing about pre-owned or pre-conditioned smartphones. Um, to know the condition of this device that we want to buy, to examine the physical aspects, and we have to look at the phone itself. You have to check for dents to see if the phone is charging. You have to you have to also carry a power bank, you know, have a power bank handy. Check the speakers, check, you know, play something with the phone. And speaking of power banks and the battery life, the battery life is a major thing to note when you're buying a fairly used smartphone. On your iPhone, if you go to the battery and battery health, you'll most likely see just how easy it is. And you, you can check the battery capacity to a maximum. On Android devices and even iPhones, you can download the pro version of Geekbench 4 to see the battery data. And although some Android devices, you know, have their custom ROMs, they go deep into the battery specs. So at number five, you should consider swapping. In the earlier part of this video, I mentioned that people get to check out the company's website itself for refurbished sales. That's great. Although something to consider is swapping. Many people today already have great smartphones and some have okay smartphones. But putting that online in exchange for another higher one is Super, super common. In, currently in Computer Village, Lagos, there are offers to swap something like an iPhone 10 for a 10s Max, and you only get to pay half the price when you're giving a one-year-old flagship for a brand new device. I bought the iPhone 10s Max, and I bought like three of them. The third one I got, I actually swapped the iPhone 10 for the 10s Max. Now, Techno recently announced on Twitter that they are taking old smartphones for new smartphones, and you also get a discount when you get a screen protector. All in all, reading the fine print is what matters in these cases, so you know exactly what you're getting. And you can check out my channel for more interesting reviews. That's pretty much it. Those are my top tips for getting a fairly used secondhand or UK used smartphone. Did I miss anything? Let me know in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next video.